with Cesario. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, methought it did relieve my passion much more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy times. Come, but one verse. Um, he is not here, so please your lordship that would sing it. Who was it? Fest, the jester, a fool the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt in love of sweet pangs remember me, for such as I am all lovers are unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion? She is not worthy then. What years in faith? About your years, my lord. Uh, too old by heaven. Let the woman take an elder than herself. So where she to him so sway she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfor more longing, wavering, soon lost and worn than women's. Are. I think it well, my lord. <laughs> then let thy love be younger than thyself. Or thy affection canst hold the bent, for women are as roses whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so it is, alas that they are so, to die, even when they to perfection grow. O oh, fellow, come, that song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. It is silly sooth, and dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Thousand sighs to say on my coffin. Let the bistro never find my grave. My poor corpse where my bones will be thrown. Let me be laid. I was slain by a fair young maid. Come away, come away, death, fly away, fly away, death. Prepare it, did share There's for thy pains. Oh, no pains. I take pleasure in singing. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly? For pleasure will be paid one time or another, sir. Give me now leave to leave thee. Let the melancholy god protect thee. Fare thee well. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love more nobly than the world prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle of queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir, I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a greater pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her if you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much that they lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I, but I know. Dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. 
In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man, as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? Well, blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damasked cheek, she pined in thought. And with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house. And all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Ha! <laughs> Sir, shall I to this lady? Ay, that's the theme. To her in haste give her this jewel. Say, my love can no give no place by no denay.